I'm Greg Alex Sr. from E3 Metacoustics in Atlanta, and I'd like to share with you an introduction to the all-new Grayson Stadler Audera Pro Advanced Auditory Evoke Potential System. I've been in the business of audiometric instrumentation since uh, the 1970s, and um, I have been involved with every auditory evoke potential system, commercial system that's been on the market since then. And this is the most comprehensive system I've ever seen. We call the new Audera Pro Advanced because of all its features and options. Look at all of this that's available in this system. Of course, it does ABR. Uh, but look at the list of stimuli that you have. You have clicks, tone bursts, broadband chirps, narrowband chirps, and speech stimulus. You have electrocochleography, of course, and you can use tiptrodes or TM electrodes. There's a separate protocol for each. You can do C vamps, cervical vamps, and there's an optional EMG monitor for that. You can do ocular vamps, middle latency responses, late latency responses, mismatch negativity, and P300. There's even EABR for cochlear implant implant patients. There is optional um, autoacoustic emissions built into the system. Uses the same probe as the GSI Cordy does. I'll show you that later. And it does both TEOAE and DPOAE and uh, both screening as well as diagnostic. And there's also the option of a SSR, right? Uh, auditory steady state response. And so this is really a comprehensive system. It includes everything. It's the most flexible system on the market today. Once you enter the patient demographics, and that's as comprehensive or, or as simple as you want it to be, and of course you would want to enter their age and their gender because it has norms built in, uh, then this is the acquisition screen. And the acquisition screen is very comprehensive. It really has everything that you would need on it. It's very easy to make changes, very easy to develop new protocols and things like that. So I'm going to just point out a few things here uh, of interest. I, I was able to um, use the system very easily. I didn't read the manual or anything like that, didn't ask any questions, just uh, used my experience in common sense. And as you can see, I was able to uh, do an ABR here, uh, uh, latency uh, intensity function. And as you can see, I did both left and right ear. And I started at 80 and then 60, uh, 40, 20, 30, went down like that. And uh, I was able to uh, label the waveforms, find thresholds, duplicate the waveforms, all those things that you would do typically clinically. And so let me go through this screen and kind of explain what we have here. Uh, up here is these particular uh, icons are what you'd use to enter uh, additional uh, patient information, uh, to look up a patient, uh, uh, to add a new patient, etc. If you're going to save anything to a file, here's how we would do it. We would use these icons in order to choose a marker to label the latencies of uh, waves one through five um, on the active waveform. We make a waveform active simply by double clicking on it. Uh, these are very convenient icons because it's what we use to um, automatically arrange the um, uh, the waveforms. Uh, I used this one right here in order to arrange my waveforms in the uh, in the order of the level uh, from a higher level down to a lower level. So you just one click on that and and the arrangement is automatic. This icon right here, uh, I'll show you uh, more detail detail on that in the next slide. But that's where you get your latency intensity information, latency intensity graphs. You want to apply apply a filter. Uh, you can just uh, click there to apply a filter, and I'll show you all the details about the filter. Um, if you um, want to split screen, there's a place to um, 
uh, as for that, I have it as a default, of course, most people would. Uh, if you're going to print, it's there. You're going to save, it's there. Uh, if you um, want to uh, erase a wave, it's this one. Um, notice that I have all the information here. I, I decided to display this. You don't have to display this, but I have all the information here about which ear, uh, what intensity, um, what type of click I'm using, the polarity of the click, in this case, where a fraction, I have uh, the rate available there and the type of stimulus, uh, whether I'm masking or not. And uh, below that, you see the latency graphs uh, for the active wave, which happens to be left ear at 80 dB. Um, you see waves 1, 3, and 5 in their absolute latencies, and then the interwave latencies. Uh, one to three, uh, and three to five, set one to five. And um, next to that, there is a, this is, this I found is really, really convenient. This list right here, okay, that's pages. You have nine pages and you can assign whatever you want to each page. For example, if I did ABR, ECOG, VAMP, OAE on a patient. I want my ABRs to be page one. I want my uh, ECOGs to be page two. I want my VEMPs to be on page four. And I want my OAEs to be on page five. Whatever I want, that's what I select there. And I can assign them to a particular page. When it prints out, it'll print out the pages in that order and, and, and make that type of report. Uh, and right here, you see the um, ongoing EEG, and this is the uh, area that you can collect in as far as the amplitude of the EEG, and this red area above it and below it, of course, is the area that is rejected. And you can adjust that if you want. The adjustment's right over here. You can adjust that so that you can increase or decrease the artifact rejection level. When you um, click on this icon right there, you will get the impedance, and the, the impedance is displayed right over here. Um, and if you would like to um, increase the size of the waveforms, there's an icon for that. Decrease the size, the scaling of the waveforms, there's an icon for that. Uh, if you would like to manipulate something about the amplifier, there's the icon. I'll show you more detail on the next slides. Uh, so you really have a, a comprehensive way of seeing everything on one screen and being able to control everything from the same screen. Here's the uh, button we would click on in order to start acquiring a waveform. And, uh, and you can set the level of the stimulus here. You can select your ear here. You can change the type of stimulus here. I just have a click, uh, but you can choose any of the other stimuli that we talked about. Uh, here you can uh, change the phase if you want to, from refraction to condensation to alternating. Uh, this is where you would change the rep rate if you wanted to. Uh, here's how you, where you would uh, specify the number of sweeps before the system started. And once it, once it, uh, once it stopped at, at a given number of sweeps, say 2,000, if you wanted to continue, then there's a, a button to continue past that. And of course, you can stop whenever you want. Uh, this is the window, um, the window in which we recorded it. I have it on 12 milliseconds, but naturally, you can make it anything you want. Um, and then, of course, you can um, load settings in here. The settings, of course, are your protocols. And, uh, and there are uh, at least a dozen different protocols already in there. And of course, they're very easy to make because you just set them up right on this one screen. You don't have to go somewhere else to do it. Uh, and then you can just save it like this and uh, name it whatever you want to name it. So it's a very, very comprehensive. Uh, I never saw uh, a system where on one screen, you've got absolutely everything that you'd want to do, and you don't have to go to a different place to do it.
This slide is an expansion. This is what happens when I click on this icon right here. It's the icon I would click on in order to get a um, uh, latency intensity graph. Here's a latency intensity graph for wave one, three, and five with the shaded areas shown. They are the norms. And uh, it's active. I can uh, simply click on that icon and pull this up and have it, I can move it around and I can have it available so that as I'm marking the waves, I can, uh, my cursor will move on the graph and I can see uh, where I'm falling on my latency intensity graph for waves one, three, and five. It helps you mark. And of course, I, I have that, uh, that available uh, when I've done a uh, latency intensity series. This slide is an expansion of the filter icon. When I press this icon right here uh, to be able to access my filters, then uh, this is what pops up and I can move it wherever I want to. And uh, of course, I see my EEG right here live uh, while I'm doing it. And I can ad adjust the um, uh, artifact rejection level if I want to. Uh, and I can do it for uh, channel A and B, channel one and two. And of course, I can change my uh, I could change my gain, I could change my uh, high pass filter, I could change my low pass filter. All of that is uh, adjustable here. This slide shows the ASSR option, Auditory Steady State Response. And the way that Grayson Stadler does this is really the fastest, most practical test method. They test four frequencies. 500, 1,000, 2,000, and 4,000 uh, simultaneously, and they test both ears simultaneously. All right, so this is the most practical way to do this test, and of course, it's completely automated. But you have the power to change any of the uh, any of the protocol that you want to. So it's uh, it's flexible and practical at the same time. Another option on the Audera Pro is OAE. It is both TEOAE and DPOAE, and it is very comprehensive. It uses the same probe, as I said before, as the uh, GSI Cordy does, which is very lightweight, very easy to use. Here is a typical popular uh, DPOAE test that I just ran on myself. It's very typical because I have a lot of uh, customers who use this all the time, just six frequencies. Six frequencies in between, say, 1,500 and 6,000. And um, it runs it fast. It has excellent filtering in it. Um, and uh, as you can see, here are my OAE levels. And this area is the uh, noise level down here. And as you're running, you can see a graph of T1, uh, F1 and F2, and you can see the actual uh, spectrum of the response itself. When you're done, of course, uh, you have all of the levels. So if you want the numbers, you've got the numbers as well. And again, you can place this anywhere you want in those nine pages of, uh, of tests that would end up in the report. Here's a comprehensive diagnostic uh, DPOAE, uh, 12 or more frequencies. And as you can see, uh, the levels are displayed as well as the noise level. This last slide is just an example of the TEOAE, because when you get the acoustic emission option, you have both DPOAE and TEOAE, both screening and diagnostic. Uh, on both types of tests. So I hope this gives you uh, a good introduction to the Grayson Stadler Audera Pro and uh, how comprehensive uh, and powerful a system it is.